everyone. Coming up here saying, how are you, how are you, how are you? <laughs> it's so good to see everyone here today. We welcome you. If this is your first time here, we especially welcome you. If this is your 10,000th time here, we especially welcome you for endurance. <laughs> but we also want to welcome everyone who's, who's joining us today virtually. Uh, we record the service and, and uh, share it on, online a little bit later. It's not live, but it's recorded so they can all see it. So just want to wave to everybody back there and welcome you here. We're so glad that, you're, that you are with us today. Uh, again, we start out with our friendly reminder. I love friendly reminders, don't you? Friendly reminder, the CDC has changed their guidelines and recommend anyone who has been vaccinated to wear a mask inside during group gatherings. Also, as we are in the flu and cold season, if you feel sick, please stay home. Amen and amen and amen. A reminder too that the poinsettia uh, dedication uh, is on the back table. If you'd like to dedicate a poinsettia to in honor or memory of someone that's there. Uh, in the parlor, there's the St. John the Apostle MCC gift tree uh, is in the parlor. I, those are items that are needed around the church all year long. And speaking of need, if you know someone who is in need of food, our food pantry is available and you can just you know, see Dale over there or anyone to try and get you into the food pantry and you can take a bag of, of food home. How was choir practice? Wonderful. Wonderful. We're growing. I know, but it's at 2 o'clock now? Yes. 2 o'clock on, on, on Wednesday. On Wednesday. So if you're interested in, in participating in that, that that's happening. Uh, Richard. Yes. Your name's here. Oh, again. 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 Oh, yeah. What did you do now? Also. Why don't we record it on the and then I don't have to walk all the way up here. I'm getting older, you know, and, um, and not any better looking. But um, I can still serve lunch. So uh, that's uh, the important thing in my uh, household anyway. Um, but here at the church next uh, Sunday, on the 19th, we'll have a festive occasion. Uh, no tears uh, allowed, uh, but we'll have lunch in recognition of Pastor Steve's uh, years of service. I don't have to cook it. Somebody will bring it all in. And uh, so we hope you'll stay for lunch next week. Thank you. We're well, applauding because you kept it short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're reminded too that we have a, a meeting of the board of directors. Come on, cheers. Yeah. Come on, cheers. Yeah. Meeting of the board of directors today after service. A reminder that our Christmas Eve service, uh, carols will begin at 6.30 and the service at 7. Uh, David and Jesse's Christmas open house is today, is that true? That's it, right? That's true. They, they say that there's flyers on the label table if you are, are interested in that. And now, uh, Andrew, it says, it says board member to read announcement. I guess that's you. So good morning, Advent people. We're in double Advent, by the way. We are in anticipation of the birth of our Christ, but we are also in anticipation of the forming of a search committee. A letter was mailed to all active members of St. John the Apostles Metropolitan Community Church on Friday, December 3rd. The letter is regarding the pastoral search committee, outlining criteria for potential committee members. For those who have yet to receive a copy, additional copies are on our table back there. Please consider applying. It would be a very big help to the church. Thank you. Thank you. No more. <laughs> so let's join together now uh, in really what we came here for and join into our call to worship 
and candlelight. Gathering one, embracing one. Winnowing one, restorative one. The one who has come, the one who will come. The one who bears the image of those who bear gods. Worthy are you, mysterious one. When confusion claims us, when we feel unable to do anything right, the holy invites us to be faithful that we may find joy. Where in the world do we find joy these days? We find joy in the light of Christ. Let us join together in singing A Candle is Burning.
I know when to get up. That's good. And I know when to sit down, too. That's even better. So this is our opportunity as a church family as we come together to offer prayers to our Lord. And we have multiple ways of doing that as you'll see them on the screen scrolling. One of the ways that's a little new to me, but I like so much, is that opportunity that we offer anyone in the congregation that would like to offer a prayer. So I'm going to give this a moment and see if there's anyone here that would like to say a prayer out loud to, to all of us. For all the families affected by the tornado, we to all the families affected by the tornado. Okay. One other way that we pray in this church is through the prayer book. And there are some prayers in the prayer book here. So, prayers of thanks for the good things in our lives that have not changed. From Bonnie and Tom Schmidt. Thank you, Jesus. Our daughter Lisa and family were spared from the storms in Kentucky. And prayers for Kentucky and all the states devastated by the storms Friday night. And then prayers for Don Schwartz, who's having hernia surgery on December 27th. Prayers for Ron and Freddie. And then at the bottom of each of these pages, there is a reading. And someone multiple, multiple times circled this reading. So I'm going to read. It says, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. Romans 8, 39. So now, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Lord God, we are so very grateful for the opportunity to be in your house and to offer prayers to you. We know, Lord, at times things just seem to move so rapid that it's hard to keep up. We don't always know where to turn or what to do, and even at times we'll feel overwhelmed because there's so much going on around us. And yet you remind us that you are our center. When we focus on you, calmness will surround us. And we will experience that sense of hope peace and joy. And so Lord, we're going to take this opportunity to offer up to you whether we say them out loud or, or silently to ourselves the names of those that are on our hearts today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing these names. We know that these people that we have said prayers for are in your hands. And we know that you will surround them with your love, with your grace, and you will give them hope and peace and joy. Today we celebrate that joy that's in our hearts. The joy that reminds us of what is to come. The joy that reminds us what will come for us. We know that as we move closer to that day of celebrating the gift that you gave us, we know that joy will be in our heart for all of eternity. And we look forward to the day that we can all celebrate in your kingdom, your house, with joy. As we say to you every day, Amen and Amen. First 
reading for today is from Philippians chapter 4, excuse me, verses 4 through 7, the New International Version. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Here ends the reading. collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. And then some soldiers asked him, what should we do? And he replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Oh, you may be seated. <laughs> well, I have to start off this time right now with a what I call uh, points of personal privilege. Ever hear that? The parliamentary procedure type of thing. Point of uh, personal privilege. My first point that I want to do is apologize to the AV booth because there was supposed to be a video that was shown before the call to worship and I just walked right over it. So I, for me, I don't know about for you, but if something's not written down, I tend not to remember it, and it wasn't written down, so I just walked right over. But I want to apologize to the AV booth. You handled that very well. Uh, the second point of personal privilege that I have right now is today is December the 12th. Uh, it's a very important date for me because it's my mother's birthday. And she would have been 92 uh, this day, but she is in heaven celebrating the birthday with her mom and her sisters and brothers and all of that. So I just just want to recognize uh, my mother's birthday today. So it's a point of personal privilege for me. Now, in today's reading, I call uh, today this this pink candle, this Advent uh, Sunday of joy. I call this the Granny Clampet Sunday. <laughs> I don't know how many of you watch the, the Beverly Hillbillies or how closely you know all the things that happened there. But at one point in one of the episodes, Granny Clampett uh, 
started to sing. And she started to sing, Joy, 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 I got joy in my heart. Down in my heart today. And, and that was so filled with, with power and strength and meaning that it just carried through. That, that joy is something we are to live out every day and present every day. And I thought about that in a way this week. Did anybody get the chance to see uh, uh, Bob Dole's funeral? Yes. You remember the, the Senate chaplain? Yes. He always impresses me. He's got such a voice on him. <laughs> but uh, he, he was there and he said a couple of things that, uh, well, more than a couple, but one thing that struck me very well, and he was quoting someone else, and I don't remember who he was quoting, but he said this person had proclaimed that I'd much rather see your sermon than hear your sermon. I'd much rather see your sermon than hear your sermon. In other, in other words, he, and he even quoted, he even quoted my beloved St. Francis of Assisi. It's about preaching the gospel always and when necessary use words. Is that our life is to be a proclamation of of the good news. Now, I'm going to get real <coughs> fundamental on you right now. You know, the devil loves it most of all. The devil loves it most of all to see a sad Christian. To see a sad Christian or a worried Christian or an apprehensive Christian. Because that's not how we are to live. What did, it, what did it say in the first reading today? Rejoice in the Lord always. Always rejoice in the Lord. Good times, bad times, sad times, joyous times. Doesn't matter. Rejoice in the Lord. Because we have a Savior who's come for us. It says here, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. In other words, let your joy be evident to all. Not just something... It, I cannot imagine a sad believer. I can't imagine a sad believer. Because that faith, that joy, that love, that peace, that hope, all those candles up on the wall are to be filling us not just these four weeks of Advent, but every day of our lives. It's the life of a Christian. That is the life of a Christian, of what we are called to do. We are to have that joy, joy, joy down in our heart. Down in our heart this day and every day. To live it and proclaim it. This one yeah, always gets me here. It's continuing on with this first reading. Do not be anxious about anything. Do not. Do not be anxious about anything. In other words, trust in God. Trust in God. No matter what the situation. I'm often reminded of a former member of this church. She's now, I think, on the East Coast. But she will always write, God is in control. God is in control. Now, that doesn't mean that we are in control of God. But I will, I will say this, that God's grace always happens. God's grace always happens. God, God did not create us to be miserable. God did not create us to be miserable. But that doesn't mean everything's going to work out the way we want. I often uh, tell my son that he lives by the mantra, I want what I want and I want it now. And sometimes I think we're all that way. We want what we want and we want it now. Now, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, 
present your request to God. Got that? You know, there, there, are, there are things you want and you need. And you should present your, your prayers and your petitions with thanksgiving to God. And then an amazing thing happens. And amazing things happen when it, once that confuses me completely. It says the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. That means we don't know what it is. We don't. We don't. We don't know why there's a peace of God. But that peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We can count on that. This, this, this pink Sunday, this uh, Granny Clampett Sunday, whatever you want to call it, just calls us to be unreasonable in the eyes of the world. Unreasonable and outrageous in our just thanksgiving to God. I firmly believe I firmly believe that all of our prayers, as it says here, all of our prayers, with thanksgiving, everything that we do, we should give thanks to God. There was a prayer, I think, that got shared, giving thanks to God for all the things that we still have in this crazy world. That's clinging on to, to what other people would say you should let go of. No, cling on to the love and work of God. Because that love and work of God is what we're called to do. Remember, you can't be a sad Christian. You can't be a fearful Christian. You can't be, well, I guess you can be a doubting Christian, but have a little bit of faith that it will all work out. That God will lead and die because God has promised us. God has promised us that. You know, in our Gospel reading, we, we have that great John the Baptist telling us, you know, what are we to do? Well, it's as simple as this. Live right. Don't think about yourself so much. Think about other people so much. And he says that there is someone coming who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And John exhorts us that to live a life that proclaims the good news, the good news of Jesus, and not be doubtful or fearful. For this is the day of joy. Amen. Amen. God calls us to create a community which welcomes all, to care for the infirm, to heal the shame of the outcast, to create a welcome for all. Let these gifts we offer begin this process of reconciliation. You ask, how can I, while attending the virtual service, make a contribution or tithe to St. John the Apostle, MCC? It is really quite simple. You can write a check and mail it to the church, or you can go to the sjamcc.com website, click on the donate button, and make your contribution via PayPal. By the way, you don't need an account with PayPal to do this.
Almighty, we are so very grateful for this opportunity to bring back to you the multiple gifts that you have given to us. We ask, Lord, that you multiply these gifts and that you help us here at St. John the Apostle as we continue our ministries. We have been blessed in so many ways, and all we can do is give you thanks. So please, Lord, bless us, guide us, and strengthen us. And we all say this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, and by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning, you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to give you praise. Jesus, our Savior, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. Let us join in singing the prayer that Jesus taught us.
Jesus came to supper with his friends. And taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of the supper, taking the cup of the fruit of the vine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim our faith. Jesus' sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory. And we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son as we eat and drink these holy things in your presence. Form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and may Christ be in your hearts with faith, by faith with thanksgiving. God of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in Jesus and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
benediction, gathering one, embracing one, the one who bears the image of those who bear God's. Open our hearts to find you in community, in the hopeful, peaceful, joyful work of your people. Go in peace. Thank you.